And on behalf of the Newsmaker Committee and the National Press Club, I want to say that we're truly honored and grateful to have as our guest this morning Armenia's Foreign Minister, Mr. Edward Nalbandian, and, uh, and also from the National Commemoration of the Armenian Genocide Centennial uh, Committee, and also the 100 Lives uh, co-founder, uh, Mr. Nubar Afayan. Um, we will first hear from the Foreign Minister, and then from Mr. Afayan. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Washington National Press Club for hosting us today and for the opportunity to meet this distinguished audience. I'm in Washington accompanying President of Armenia, Ser Sarkisyan, to participate in the events organized in the United States in the framework of worldwide commemoration of the Armenian Genocide in Germany. As a nation which passed through the horrors of genocide, we feel a deep moral responsibility to raise a worldwide awareness about this scourge and to do our utmost to contribute to the prevention of crimes against humanity. It is in this spirit that the Armenians worldwide pay tribute to one and a half million innocent victims of the Armenian genocide and join their voices to the pledge of never again. As a one of the steps taken in this direction, I would like to emphasize the Genocide Prevention Resolution initiated by Armenia and co-authored by 71 states, which was adopted this March 27, by consensus in the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. It emphasized the importance of combating denial of genocides and crimes against humanity. Denial is not opening the door to reconciliation. It is opening the door to new crimes against humanity. It is with this understanding that Pope Francis stated during the Mass in St. Peter's Cathedral on the occasion of the centennial of the Armenian Genocide, concealing or denying evil is like allowing a wound to keep bleeding without bandaging it. Regrettably, Turkey, instead of trying to comprehend the message of His Holiness, dared to accuse him for being biased. And this, is, this was not a sole case. Turkey harshly condemned all those who during the past weeks expressed their sympathies and commemorated the centennial. To name only few, the European Parliament, France, Russia, Germany, Austria, United States of America and others. Turkey has not just condemned those countries and international organizations, it has challenged the truth and has obviously failed in its fight against justice. The worldwide commemoration of the centennial of the Armenian Genocide is the testimony to that failure. More than 60 official delegations, including heads of states, <coughs> parliaments, high-level government officials, a tribute to the victims together with the Armenian nation during the solemn commemoration event at the Genocide Memorial in Yerevan. Several thousand commemoration events are taking place worldwide, held at the governmental, parliamentarian, ecumenical, academic, civil society and community levels. The statement of German president as well as the declaration of the Austrian parliament showed that nations which 100 years ago where allies of the Ottoman Empire are facing their part of the history. On April 22nd, 23rd, the Global Forum Against the Crime of Genocide was held in Yerevan, which gathered together 600 participants, academicians, genocide scholars, lawyers, parliamentarians, clergy, journalists from 50 countries. The International Association of Genocide Scholars is planning to hold its annual conference in Armenia this July. We feel the sympathy and support from all parts of the world, international organizations, civil society, academic circles, and the world media. The headlines and the news of the major outlets at the main TV and radio channels worldwide are providing extensive coverage on the Armenian genocide and the commemoration events. 
The Remembrance Days could be an opportunity for acknowledging the past and laying foundations for a better future. We hoped that Turkey would embark on that road since we firmly believe that there is a better choice than to justify those who perpetrated the genocide. In Ankara last August, I passed the invitation from the President of Armenia to the President of Turkey to participate in the centennial events in Yerevan. Once again, Turkey rejected to shake the hand extended to it. Luis Moreno Ocampo, the first prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, stated in Yerevan during the Global Forum, if we cannot get the recognition for what for what would happen 100 years ago, how we are going to stop genocide today? Would it be possible to avoid the horrors of Holocaust, Cambodia, Rwanda, Darfur, or the sufferings of the victims targeted by the so-called ISIS if the Armenian genocide was internationally recognized and the perpetrators were brought to justice? We believe that yes is the right answer. If there are still people who doubt it, perhaps they can be convinced by Adolf Hitler's words that I saw again yesterday at the Washington Holocaust Museum, mm -hmm. who on the eve of the of Holocaust said, who still talk nowadays of the extermination of the Armenians. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the main pillars of the Centennial commemoration events is the gratitude to those who assisted and supported Armenians during the dark days of the genocide. In this regard, I would like to highlight the huge charitable contribution of the Near East Relief, which was established by the U.S. government at the urging of Henry Morgenthau, the U.S. ambassador to Turkey, to prevent what he called the campaign of race extermination. It is credited with having killed for more than 130,000 Armenian orphans scattered across the region. Being in Washington, I would like to extend our gratitude to 44 states of the USA which have recognized the Armenian genocide. Later today, during the centennial commemorative service at the National Cathedral, we also will pay tribute to the memory of President Woodrow Wilson, who will always be remembered as a true friend of the Armenian nation, and who shared his conviction that the American people have made the cause of Armenia their own. I would like to stop here and pass the floor to Nubar Afean, the U.S. National Commemoration of the Armenian Genocide Centennial Chairman, for the presentation on the commemoration events in the USA and in Washington. Thank you. Thank you and, and good morning. <clears throat> the National Commemoration of the Armenian Genocide Centennial began with the efforts of the Armenian Church based in the U.S., both in the East and West Coast, Diocese and Palaces. And it will provide Armenian Americans over the next three days the opportunity to come from all across this country to first and foremost remember and honor the memory of those who lost their lives a hundred years ago. We will show a spirit and purpose of unity, gratitude, and we wish to raise the awareness uh, in Washington and throughout the U.S., as has already been the case across the world. The centennial is clearly a personal and tragic event for all descendants of survivors, such as myself. But at the same time, it's also an opportunity to take note of the journey of survivors across the world who, with the assistance of individuals, institutions, and governments, not only managed to survive and to revive, but today thrive across the world, and thrive in a way that allows them to connect to current tragedies and to step in to offer support based on the experience that our ancestors had 100 years ago. That is, as the foreign minister mentioned, our obligation, and that's one that we have embraced uh, in the U.S. National Commemoration. We also want to look forward, and, and these commemorations and the spirit in which we're doing them will persist in the Armenian diaspora and in Armenia over the coming 
decades. Uh, we really do feel a connection and a kinship to those who have gone through similar experiences. We visited the Holocaust Museum yesterday. It was very clear to us that a, sh that a mere 10 years after the end of the first campaign in Ottoman Turkey, what happened in Germany clearly was influenced and it was quite remarkable that the state of Germany and the president took note of that this year for the first time and actually recognized that there were, there were involvements uh, that, that may have crossed over between these events. And we look forward to more scholarship on that connection. Mm -hmm. As for the events of the next three days, there will be three main events tonight at the National Cathedral. We will assemble uh, both American Armenians, guests from throughout the world, and representatives of the government. We are quite pleased that Vice President Biden will be joining us, as well as Ambassador Samantha Power. And that will be an ecumenical service. Um, we witnessed in Armenia on April 23rd a gathering of many, many different uh, uh, leaders of faiths coming from around the world. And today, again, we look forward to the ecumenism and the support that others are expressing towards our uh, commemoration at this special time. We will have a, a concert dedicated to the commemoration tomorrow night and on Saturday, uh, yeah, tomorrow night, Saturday, uh, it will all culminate in a, an event where we will express our gratitude from the Armenian American community towards individuals. President Wilson was mentioned, there will be others who have played a very big role in our history, but also organizations, nearest relief, the Red Cross, others who have been tremendously helpful at the time of the genocide and thereafter, but also note the growing number of countries who have chosen to place doing the right thing at the top uh, and recognizing the genocide and allowing their citizens to follow the example and recognize uh, this tragic event. Um, those are the comments that I had today. Um, I will mention that at the end, at a personal level, as our host uh, offered a personal story, in, in my own case, uh, my grandfather was taken to be uh, 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 killed as part of the genocide and was actually saved, ironically, by German officers who were there participating in the logistics of the flow of tens of thousands of Armenians through the berlin Baghdad railway that was under construction but at an individual level, broke ranks with their government and their military leadership and stepped in and saved many Armenians, including my grandfather. And so one of the things that we realize on this centenary is that beneath the, the surface of a major crime, there are individual human stories and there are people who've acted as heroes. And I want to end my comments as saying that for us, among the most important messages of this experience is to recognize that the survivors often had saviors who stepped in, and that's the spirit that we want to see also in the world today as we see tragic events persist. Thank you, and we can open it up. Uh, politics aside, if, if one reads the statement made by the president this year, five paragraphs of it, and if Raphael Lemkin hadn't coined the word genocide until now, the word would be coined for what the president said. In other words, the crimes that were described those who have already recognized it, reference to the Pope, Medziren, which is the equivalent of Shoah in the Armenian uh, uh, culture and language. If the word didn't exist, I think it's reasonable to assume that people would have coined the word to describe what he wrote. In that regard, I think it was a very significant statement. Before we go, um, Mr. Alfein, I, I just wonder if you might even comment about what, how the American Armenian community and the diaspora sees these issues, what their hopes are. Here. Sure, we're, um, a lot of this has been covered, but I, I think what I would like to say is the, the, Amer the relationship between the American community uh, and the, the, the subset that are of, of Armenian uh, origin uh, has, been, has been a profound one for 100 years because, in fact, the United States, at the time of the genocide, mobilized in an unprecedented way and organized relief efforts that really set the example for a century of, of, of international relief that, uh, that, that this country has provided and became a model to other countries 
uh, Nearest Relief, which was set up for this and, and other, uh, 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 to provide relief for other atrocities at the time, um, uh, is just one. That, that really is, is, a, is a noteworthy connection. And in fact, I think more work should be done and more research should be done on those types of issues. I think that the Armenian Genocide was a, an, a very important part of the maturation of the U.S. Uh, uh, role in providing relief worldwide. And, and that, that period happens to have helped Armenians survive. And now, 100 years later, we feel a great sense of gratitude towards that, those steps and everything ever since. And clearly, Armenians have been given a chance to thrive in this country and we're members of the community and we're ready to, to use our experience in support of others through relief, through prevention efforts, uh, uh, etc. So really I think from the diaspora standpoint, we look at this centennial as a launching pad for a renewed, vigorous effort to use our experience for good, even while we recognize that there are aspects of this that are yet mired in denialism and, and wordsmithing, but at the end of the day, there's a very powerful experience and a connection between Armenians and the American community.